Good evening, everyone. Um, what a day out there. Absolutely um, fantastic. I hope you're all keeping well and um, getting in out of the garden this evening uh, might be a task because, um, you know, it is, it is a beautiful evening and um, I suppose we all want to be out and doing a bit. So I'm just waiting for a um, few people to hook on and we're going to have a chat tonight about companion planting and the importance of it. Uh, so you're all very welcome. So if you um, want to send us a comment there, let us know where you're from um, and say hi. It would be um, a great thing to say. Um, just say hi and um, what you've been doing in the garden and then we're going to um, yeah, I'm going to get in and have a little presentation done on, um, if you can hear me okay, just give me a thumbs up there or something just so I'll be able to, um, so I know I know that you can hear me because um, we were having a little bit of technical difficulties earlier on there in the in our internet world. So so suppose, look, at, to get started, um, I had to do up this presentation. I was given it last Friday to a group of gardeners. Actually, thanks, Dorothy. In in the US, I was given um, a this bit of a presentation. It was part of um, the square foot um, instructors course I was doing. It was um, it's something we have to do every every um, couple of months. There, to give a presentation. One week it could be um, composting. The next month it could be just companion planting. I was picked to do it. So um, hopefully the the slides will be alright because. Companion planting is all about, you know, finding the right place for the right things because if you're growing the wrong plants beside a plant, you know, one can be robbing off the other. Like in my case, one time I was growing onions beside my prized and my uh, little children of asparagus that I've been watching growing for the last uh, five years and they've definitely stunted the growth um, somewhat. So I'm going to, without further ado, I might just win. I'm going to share some slides. Um, about companion plant because I think it's just easier. I find it just easier to do it on slides than talking. At least then, if you want to take a screenshot, you can, or it'll be in the recording. So please bear with me while I share the screen now, and we'll get um, share screen, share screen, and oh yeah, and we'll make this bigger now. And make that. Ah, so, 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 so. Oh, yeah. Um, anyway, that. What is going on? Oh, there we are now. Uh, perfect. So, a beginner's guide to companion planting, basically. And as I was saying, it is a very important thing to do and look at. If there is a behind the, the scenes here, you know, at, at Better Plants, like we are super busy at the moment, but, you know, putting these shows tonight um, together every week, you know, it takes a lot of work and a little bit of effort. And I want to thank all my guests so far as well. Look at from Rosemary to Jill to James, to, uh, uh, Dermot and everyone else that was in there. So um, I'm going to shoot on now and we'll go. So if you see me looking left or right, I have another screen here, a big screen with uh, we're gone high tech. So. So let's look at companion planting. So oh, skipping far too fast there. Sorry about that. So what is it? It's used by farmers and horticulture for centuries. And believe it, you know, I always feel as well, you know, I think, you know, because we're born in an area of technology and all this super, super fast internet and cars and that, that sometimes I feel myself, you know, that we are actually beholden to the people of the last generation and the generation before because the american indians the aboriginals of australia were using this technique for for centuries before we were even talking about no dig you know companion planting so this 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 was one of the big things when the europeans um, landed in america and the, the found indians american indians companion planting and it's an amazing actually story so it's used by horticulture for over eight thousand years so imagine and it's called the three sisters planting. So it basically, um, again, look at planting the wrong food and the wrong pet can be um, disastrous, really, and also. 
So it's different crops in sheer space. That's what it's all about. And reasons including, you know, definitely pest control is one. Pollination, providing habitat for beneficial in insects. But people always say, how to get more ladybirds, ladybugs into my garden and hoverflies and wasps and stuff that's going to eat them apist. So, um, very good. So, um, you know, so you're going to get increased, you know, um, crop, um, crop quality and all that and productivity. So broccoli, and it's, I was actually going to go back actually on the, the American Indians as well. What, you know, the whole three sisters was about, like the elder sister, you probably guess it. The elder sister was the tallest one and the one that was carrying the rest of the crops. So if you're an elder sister, you can imagine that, uh, you know, the, the beans was first, or sorry, your sunflower or your, um, God, and then um, your corn was first, then your beans, and then your pumpkin or squash was the last. So the strongest, you know, the oldest eldest sister seems to carry the, the weight of the family. So that's kind of the way that, and it was celebrated as, as, as a way of celebrating act of, you know, it was um, celebration to God and, the gods of food and stuff like that and that's why they grew it and then actually it was form of all nourishment they, they reckon they could get if you think of it you're getting your proteins you're getting your carbohydrates and all the minerals and vitamins in in three in three plants so definitely they weren't they definitely weren't stupid anyways you know they were so super intelligent to think that you could group this crop together three sister crops and get get so much nourishment out of them and so that, that's and throwing a wild buffalo along with that and you have super meal. So I suppose so broccoli. Broccoli is the king of vegetables and you, it's a must in every garden. You know, I, I'm going to tell a very quick story there. My wife Alma gives blood, I don't know, maybe so many times a year. And um, every time she goes, the red blood cells in, in always are going up from the first time she's given it and the lady then the nurse are always surprised and it is down to the fact that we're always eating broccoli probably 365 days a year out of our garden it's not some crop that's in the shop so you know excuse the french but that's what it is so broccoli you know again the whole thing about these friends of broccolis add benefit to broccoli the foes you know are taken away so Friends, spinach is good to grow because, you know, spinach is, is low planting, so it can grow in under the, the broccoli plant. Swiss chard, radishes are very good. I'm not a big fan, but they are good. Beetroot, I do grow my beetroots in my raised beds down the middle and um, beside my broccoli because they don't need a lot of light and they're not going to rub. Broccoli takes a lot of calcium out of the soil. So you don't want plants that are going to rub. Then plants that are not that fond of uh, broccoli would be obviously tomatoes. Tomatoes aren't that, you know, tomatoes are such a heavy feeder. They need everything and they take up a lot of vitamin C out of the, the soil as well. So, and that's why really I'd be always saying, look at healthy soil, healthy plants, healthy people. If you don't get your soil right from the start, you're going to have a lot more issues with pest disease and all that. Potatoes, peppers, another thing, because potatoes are sort of like the tomato family anyways, you know, they're very, very heavy feeders. That's why when my, what's after happening there now? Um, what's after happening there now? I'm happy if you can hear me. I'm sorry, um, I'm having technical difficulty there. I don't know what's going on with my um, screen at the minute.
<laughs> I don't know whether it was even there all the time. I just after having um, a breakdown there in the. Hopefully, I'm back up now. Um, now, I hope you didn't hear me shout to my daughter there on the internet. <laughs> well, we're back on. I don't know what happened there. So, um, all black hair. All right, nothing now. Um, yeah, so can you see me now? As the fella says, can you hear me now? So, I don't know. I think my um, laptop took um, is overloaded at the moment. So, it could be that. And it could be just internet. Um, so, I was just saying broccoli. Again, tomatoes need a lot of vitamin C there. Back now. Ah, brilliant. Thanks very much, Jennifer, for letting me know there. Um, internet issues so um i had to shout at the daughter there to turn off the internet <laughs> thanks very much yeah, mary so back up so again carrots um friends brilliant crop the break they actually are really good for growing beside tomatoes why because they're small and they go into the ground and you plant them about Plant them a good 14, 15 inches away from the roots of the plant. Oh, I could see you and hear you all the time. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so you plant them around your, uh, around the, the plant. And what to do is carrots will aerate the soil for the tomato plant. And it will actually help, if you think of it, when you're watering the plants, your tomato plants, it allowed water to get down into the roots of your tomatoes a lot better. And it won't rob. Beans, peas are, are compatible. Again, tomatoes will provide a lot of shade then for carrots, especially if you're growing them in tunnels and greenhouses because, you know, the carrot leaf doesn't like that real strong sun light on, onto, the, onto the leaf and it can brown them up. So it definitely, and again, look at it, saying, it, it breaks up the soil as well around your tomato plants. So look at coriander, dill is not very good with carrot because it's just the root system and what they're taking out of the soil it, it, it's not going to help with the carrots. So again, leeks are very good. Some people say onions as well. It should be on that list there as well. Leeks are quite good because they, especially if they're outside, it will confuse um, the carrot flies as well. So if you think of it that way, it's onions, stuff like that definitely help deter the carrot fly as well. That, you know, it's sort of, because I think that's a lot to do with companion planting as well. So when predators come in, they're a little bit confused because they don't know what's planted where and then if you have leeks beside and then again actually the tomato the tomatoes protect against them um, the smell of the tomato protects against degree or the carrot fly as well so it, it's a very good a good system to do beetroot again absolutely you'll see some of these kind of repeating on each other again broccoli we said brussels sprouts lettuce cabbage is very good because Broccoli doesn't take a lot of the calcium out of soil and doesn't need an awful lot to grow. Again, they won't, you know, they won't go well with pole beans, runner beans, or tomatoes either, because what is needed in them plants, the tomatoes are robbing it all. So you don't want to be draining one plant and versus the other, because you'll never get your soil right. That that's important. So cabbage again, look at beetroot. We're saying celery. If you like a lover of celery. It, it's a brilliant thing to grow onions, potatoes, mint. I, I look at, I put it in there, but it's, um, it is compatible, but I wouldn't be planting it in because you want to keep your mint in pots because it'll just take over. Sage is very good as well. Some of them will, will attract in the, um, the white butterflies as well and actually deter them. Again, runner beans, peppers, tomatoes, strawberries. The strawberries is very much for attracting, will attract a lot of slugs and that. So if you have cabbage beside your, um, Strawberries, the chance that you'll have more more slugs coming into your cabbage. So if you want to keep it that way, it's better. Again, I suppose, you know, the cabbage needs a lot of the same nutrients that runner beans would need to grow. So if you're planting two of them together, again, one is going to rub off the other, and we don't want that. Hope this is all going okay for you. I'm not speaking too fast, but it's... Um, asparagus, this is what I was talking about, my love with asparagus. Um, again, carrots, quite good actually grow very well with with tomatoes as well and basil coriander dill and parsley the tomato actually it the do, do, do. the asparagus get get the specific kind of a root rot and a root um, grub and the tomatoes actually protect against that as well but obviously i think it's a little bit awkward i would find a little bit awkward having asparagus beside my um 
tomatoes because um, just where it's situated and you'd be rooting up the soil each time and just getting a right bed for it. But the garlic, they're not fond of garlic. The potatoes, look at you, probably wouldn't be planting them in beside your potatoes anyway, but they're not. Um, and onions as well. They don't grow well with onions because they stunt the growth of your asparagus. So that was a big mistake. I had lovely asparagus and I was actually wondering why they weren't doing as well. Um, I think it was the third year in, I was thinking, God, yeah, and my wife will kill me because she loved asparagus. Well, she loved the ones out of the garden, so you have to be very careful. <laughs> so cauliflower again, celery is good. Spinach, because spinach is, is down to the ground. Rosemary is very good as well. Sunflower is very good because, again, you're attracting in um, ladybirds or ladybugs you're attracting in the hoverflies and all that with with the sunflowers and that as well the beets grow again beetroot is perfect so if you think of it you know when maximizing space so if you have a cabbage the cabbage is coming up there's lots of room all around in your in your bed so you can plant in a few um, beetroots all around it relish again tall corn as well because the corn will come up over the or oh, 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 well it, it's a high plant anyway so like and, and your um it won't it, it won't affect because the cauliflower will be fine and then strawberries peas and rue is um a herb there as well that doesn't like either you know it pulls the nutrients out of the soil peas again because i suppose it's the the nutrients that the peas need to grow is in and uh, the cauliflower needs that also celery again look at you can grow them beside leeks spinach tomatoes there's no harm in them at all celery is one of them things it, it just grows anywhere and you'll even put in a glass of water when you're finished and it'll still grow <laughs> there's no there's no getting rid of it I, I don't like it so um i used to grow and put in juice but i think i just overdosed on it one time and i just no no more celery for me um it, it nothing like um carrots too much corn or potatoes so it's it, so if you're growing them you know just because there is a little like I, i'm I have an ebook nearly done up for companion planting and there will be a little chart in it what will go which with what and uh, stuff like that but it is it is important just to know these things because you know you want to maximize the space but you don't want plants that's going to rub off each other i know i keep saying that but that's exactly where it is corn that's one of the three sisters that's the first of the three sisters or it can be sunflower eater again cucumber beans peas, beans, pumpkin, squash, and the sunflowers. They, they're all fine with them because if you were saying like, I, I actually have in the next couple of slides all about the tree sisters and the way you would plant them. And it, I think you should actually experiment with that as well this year, you know, just get some, um, if you think of it because the climbing beans, the climbing beans are, you know, want to go up and then you have to put in some sort of a stake to put them in. But if you have your sweet corn coming up, your climbing bean and then your pumpkins underneath you're not going to get much more in in one square bed like it in fairness so it, it's a super way to do it again to don't like them um, the tomatoes eggplants and the fennel either so just keep them away from from your corn and i think if you're doing the three sisters one you'll be you'll be really good so lettuce again friends with broccoli it can grow in underneath it's brilliant to plant plant with carrots corn is fine onions peas it, it's pretty pretty all around and it, i think again you know when you're looking in especially when you're planting peas and stuff in rows because you could be planting a row of peas and you could have 16 inches or 18 inches between the rows there's an opportunity to put down a row of something you know so you could get your lettuce in you know you can get something else in if you think oh yeah sure i can i can now utilize the extra space i have in my garden so it just rather than putting stuff to waste it's brilliant and then look at parsley and cabbage is not a good friend of theirs either and then onions we all look at onions are brilliant every like i, I grow i only planted onions there the other evening in, in red and um red and white onions and i just love them again they like cabbage carrots lettuce parsnips and tomatoes funnily enough they go they grow easy again i'd say you know because it's things are repeating that not best with asparagus and they don't go well with beans or peas either so i want to keep them away from each other as well peas again they'll grow beside sprouts cabbage carrots 
sunflowers, corn and lettuce. And then obviously though, they're not mad about um, the chives, the garlic, the onions and shallots as well. So if you just keep them to one side, so if you're growing your peas again, as I said, just put something like your, you know, you can put sprouts in the middle if you like sprouts or your corn, it, it's quite good as well. So that definitely will help with that. So the relish again, they're quite small, but it, it's strange enough. Like they don't, um, they don't grow well with broccoli, um, but they do. You know, beetroots. You can mix them in cabbage, carrots, and cucumber, kale, lettuce. But um, for some reason, and heads up as well, they don't. Um, they don't. They just. They don't like work grown beside each other. You know, and it's it's amazing that um, over the years people have you know took the time to experiment and put one in against the other and look and there is like there could be things on this list that you might say oh well that does go with this and one contradict contradict the other but um this this is um i suppose the list i've been working off for for a long time and, and researching the best so like it's um it, it's open for contradiction but it is it is looking a bit rule of a thumb so again look we'll hopefully i think everyone is going to be growing tomatoes or it's one of my favorite to grow anyway definitely so again good asparagus carrots definitely think you know putting in your carrots and there's actually one there that's missing i'll um it'll come to me now in a minute yeah carrots is very good celery is good beside it lettuce spinach and um it doesn't like obviously beetroot fennel peas potato dill and rosemary oh god it'll come to me now and i would it should be on i think it's probably down underneath onions and there is a herb that goes with it someone might be able to tell me what it is if you're making up bruschetta you add in your tomatoes balsamic vinegar some olive oil and your i have some growing out in the window still it'll come to me but if you grow it alongside me i'll put it into the comments it's just somewhere just in there and it just won't come out for some reason um yeah it'll come out it'll find it so this is the tree sister planting ah yes thank you very much neve basil that's the one yes 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 <laughs> having a brain freeze there thank you so much ladies yeah julie very good so um yep rita very good so the tree sister planting just so if you're going to get started with it it's very important a few few little steps so obviously you want a sunny location that's number one probably somewhere that's not overly windy because you're growing the tall corn and you don't want the wind knocking them down so if you find somewhere that's reasonably um sheltered it would be a really good idea with in a sunny location so then again get the soil right so lots of organic matter sometimes what to do is if you if you plant around in a circle depending on um the room you have so Again, soil number one, get that right. Sunny location. So you plant the corn first. So once the danger of frost has gone, so like you could be in into the middle of April, like you could you could be starting your sweet corn in your house now at the minute or something like that and, and plant it out from the plant, which is a great, a great start off. Maybe you've done that already, it was brilliant. So then you plant it out when the danger of frost has gone. Definitely, you know, don't be afraid just to hold out a little bit longer. So you don't plant your beans then but it must be the climbing bean a bush bean won't work for this it had to be a french climbing bean or a climbing bean for this so when it's about six inches maybe to a foot tall about that size um you you add you add in your next your beans that's what you do so again you're probably more than likely like us all i have french runner beans planted and um that's the next step so then you wait for another a week or later and then you plant in your seeds so you plant in your um pumpkin pumpkin seeds or whatever else you're going to plant with them but pump pumpkins are quite easy to grow or squash or something like that it, it's very easy to grow so that that's what you'll be putting them around the perimeter so we're going to go into that so basically definitely get your soil right so i i'd be choosing you know an area in, in your bed now or in your garden say look at and go and experiment with it because you don't need an awful lot if, even if you had a three foot in diameter or four foot in diameter or even if you have a square bed you'll work it into square beds easier so it's it's not a it's not a big deal so if you plan now get your corn started get your beans started 
and then your squash then again if you do the same with they do the same in your tunnel of what you're doing now you know if it's outdoors so if you're planting your corn get that in now and then leave it for maybe a week or two get your french runner beans in and then start off your squash or whatever else you're going to um, plant after that so then they, they're ready to go out in succession i think that, that that would be a good idea to do it that way because again then you, you won't be worrying about the frost frost coming out so even if you're planting your corn out and they're only three or four inches tall excellent stuff so this is what i was just talking about and then um, so you'd be talking like you can do this in a square in a square bed but it doesn't have to be so if you think of it your corn is planted in the middle whether you can see my little arrowy thing there so you start off with your corn and then you're planting your beans around your corn and they're the climbing beans remember now so if you mark out two foot the um, circle in the middle leave that blank and then so you're one two three four five five corn and then you have four so you you think like you're going to get a serious amount of green beans off that there's no question about it like like you'll be bags shopping bag fulls of green beans but you could you could do it just with two or three as well just the same or even just you know you don't have to do it a lot because there's a lot of green beans going to be produced in this and again you know nature in nature and uh, the plants on well, a good a good idea as well when you're planting um any of them seeds soak them in the liquid seaweed overnight you know with the beans the um, the beans especially anyway just for a couple of hours even not overnight just to give them a head start is really really important and the squash definitely i would and pumpkins as well give them a little soak it definitely speeds up the germination and I just when the roots come up then they're a little bit hardier but what's going on there is the um, six squash planted is a lot yet but just, um, there's a lot in that but um so you have your corn and then you have your beans then that are bringing nitrogen fixing into the soil that's given more nutrients and nitrogen to your corn to grow and then the nitrogen going out into your squash to grow as well so you can you know make it smaller if you want make it bigger but just just gives you an idea of what way to um to work because i think yeah read it said yeah six squash plant is a lot but it just it i thought this diagram was, was quite good because it just showed um, the idea of it so you know you can you can do it either or but like that just shows the picture of the indians back like you see the size of their um their corn plants back then like they had to build a little scaffolding or they'd get up to them <laughs> so it's um but like stuff like that fascinates me you know how they were doing it you know centuries ago you know and it's really not we're kind of going back slowly but surely back into that way i think it because garden is one of them things you know it, it doesn't it doesn't change a huge pile so i hope that's really helpful so we're going to get into flowers so again you know this is something i knew about and i've heard about and i've read about and i didn't do it and um because up till a year or two ago I wasn't that really interested in flowers but when you actually look at the beneficial flowers and how they're going to affect um, your plants and everything else and how to go so marigolds is a must you know again it deters white flies and extracts someone asked me earlier on like how do you get ladybirds or ladybugs into you know marigolds are really really important and they'll help because if you get ladybugs or ladybirds whatever you like to call them into your tunnel into your garden they'll naturally take care of them dirty apis when they come around the place because they are a menace menace when they come in again the poached egg again hover flies they come in and they'll feed off because look see doing this like i know look at down through the years like myself like everyone else probably that's the gardener for i made up my garlic sprays my garlic and um chili sprays other sprays and other sprays but don't forget when you spray garlic on your plant that garlic will also is not good for ladybugs or ladybirds and the hover flies and stuff like that so if you're spraying the garlic spray on it may not be the best best for for your plants you know for other insects that's on your plant so just be wary of that as well and then look at it the, the poached egg plant they're absolutely beautiful um a beautiful 
flowers. So they're definitely add an extra bit of color to your garden, but also they'll attract hover flies. And again, again, it's all about pollinating. You know, they're going to pollinate your plants better. And again, they're going to eat the apples as well. So it's very important to get them in. Like I, I know I myself even you know we have the worm towers in their square foot beds and I actually see the the blue tits and other birds coming down are feeding off the I put in on the worm towers, I put in a feeders for the birds on top of them. And now I see more birds coming in, which is brilliant. So we get more birds used to coming into the garden. So and they're they're going to be in return, you know, eating eating the different pests that would be coming in. So asters as well, beneficial insects, including bees and butterflies. So particularly good companion plants for asparagus. And again, look at it, just really, really brighten up your garden as well. You know, what can be said for a comfrey? Like it's it's a brilliant, brilliant plant to have in your garden. I think, you know, and all you have to do is cut a bit of a clipping off, off a root somewhere and ask, beg, borrow, or steal one. But it's a must to have in your garden because there's so many uses for it. Like, you know, again, it attracts pollinators, the bees, the hover flies. These are all so such an essential thing. And then the leaves and the stems are absolutely amazing for um, making up tonics for your garden. They're a good fertilizer. And you can just even the roots. So you can, you know, they'll really, really go deep. The roots are huge beneficial. So you can look up loads of recipes there, even for rubs. And you can make your own homemade rubs. Um, aches and pain, joint issues, you know, the comfrey is very good. You can make up loads of stuff out of the roots. So they're powerful. It's worth it's worth spending that half an hour some evening if you're sitting around on the toilet or doing nothing or you're um, rather than watching telly. Um, just, um, you know, Google, you know, what what how, how what to make from comfrey because you'd be surprised all the, all the really, really good things you can do with comfrey. So, um, yeah, we'll shoot on. So I hope you enjoyed that. That's look at I can go on like it you could go on for another half an hour on companion planting. It just it it goes on and on and on and on. And then it gets really complicated. Well it's not really complicated, but it goes into a lot of, of depth. So I think if you're planting just either go back to these um slides, like I will have the D book out in the next um maybe a week or two, hopefully I'll just get it finished up. And that that will give you more of an idea of what to plant and where to plant and stuff like that. Because um, it is if you can get it right, you know, for the first the first year and experiment because that's what gardening is all about. Experiment and you don't have to do everything on the one year. You know, take your time and enjoy it. But you know, tr trial and error is a great thing. Like you 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 put in a plant and you put a few things around it because and definitely I think we should you know if we like there's whatever people on the call tonight. If if we can all send in pictures of our tree sister companion planting, and um, you just have to find out if if you're one of three sisters, I have seven sisters, and they're all amazing ladies. So I'm not going to say which is the the corn and which is the bean, and uh, I'm definitely not going to say who's the pumpkin. <laughs> uh, so it's um, I, I think but I think it'd be a good little um, challenge for us all. Who can um, you know show us your tree sister planting, how it's going and how successful it was for you. So maybe it's something we can start in one of the groups. So again, look at like every week, guys, you know, I'm, you know, I see a lot of customers there and we're very, very grateful for all, all, all we get out of them, um, you know, all the support you give us and, you know, and I suppose the customer service we give as well, it, it's quite good. And, you know, we know for years our products are really really the top quality products that you will get in this country there's no question about it we have the best products so um look we have a show offer again look at this includes your liquid seaweed your root booster we're getting so much feedback on this root booster guys it is phenomenal it is you know i I've, I've been using it for the last three four years myself before I even put it on put my own label on it that that product is just mind blowing and what it's going what it's doing for my tomatoes along with the tomato feed we have is just wow and just like a, a lady there on jill she was actually on last week and she said the roots that she's doing from plant transplant and she's getting is amazing so look at and we have obviously the soil conditioner we have our pellets you know that's a 65 euro there now at the minute you go onto our website there and look at the garden show offer grab one there because they're absolutely super but 
definitely liquid with seaweed like again black spot we get brilliant results there with pepper plants with black spots and stuff like that so it's 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 amazing what you know getting the good quality will do so i'm going to stop sharing the screen now and um i'm just going to say hello to a few people there if i can so look at what we'll do is you know maybe down the road we'll do another um section on um companion planting because I, I think it's a topic you know you just open up um pandora's box really with it and and you can do do what you want you know what i mean and and you can um there's no end to it but definitely take some of it on board and um, implement it slowly but surely into your garden because it will it will make a big difference to your garden because um you know we're we're just all this little uh, amateur gardener and look at don't be afraid look at i, I get met in every other day of the week and um I do, we do get back to them and i do personally try and get back to them with some people looking after social media there sometimes and you know they'll be sending all there's 10 messages there and they need to reply so i'll sit down and i normally try and ring people and if there's an issue we, we try and get it sorted so look at guys i really hope you enjoyed that and if you did you know maybe like and share our page if you can and um the, it's it's gas because it was actually this time last year i had the idea for doing this gardening show and i was just so busy in the garden and i was just so busy with everything else and i just didn't get it right in my um in my psyche just to to launch it but i'm, I'm really enjoying it now so next week we have a lady on that's going to be talking about the no dig it's so popular at the minute it's just it's it's mind-blowing it's just taken off like like I, I, I well, half and uh, part of my garden is no dig, and part of the garden needs a dig. And look at I, I no qualms of doing either. But I, I really enjoy the, the no dig part. So we've a lady coming on next week, and she's going to be talking about she's ten years doing it. She's very, very passionate about. It. She's a nutritionist as well. So there's going to be a lot to learn because it is if you're starting off and you don't want to be breaking your back, it's it's a really, really good way to uh, just get started, and you can start as big and small as you want. So look at. I'm going down to tidy up my garden. I have, um, I'm experimenting with a new, as I'm always, with a new um, wormery uh, for making our own uh, worm tea. I have a bigger version. We're, um, we're putting in a, a smaller one for more household, for, so you can put it at the back door, you can put your food waste in and get your worm tea out of it. So that's what we're doing. So look at guys, from my house to your house. Thank you very much for joining me and i thank you again for all your support and stay safe and be happy that is the most important bit and be relaxed and don't be afraid about to smell the roses because you know i think it's time you know when you go out in the morning just taking a deep breath yeah yeah it's going to be a good day good day for the garden regardless so guys thank you so much talk to you all soon thank you